Welcome to the series where I test out money making methods from the OSRS wiki. Feel free to leave suggestions on which money maker you'd like to see next. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a nice playlist that I've created that has all of the previous money makers that I've already tried. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's moneymaker, I thought we'd go ahead and try out a free to play one because it has been a while since I've done one and today we'll be doing collecting nature runes. Now of course this won't be as good as crafting them yourself, but it's actually a pretty decent moneymaker if you are free to play only. Not only will you be making a nice amount of GP, but you'll also be getting some minor magic XP as well. Now do keep in mind though that this moneymaker is in the wilderness and just because it's free to play and it is deep wilderness, I thought personally that it would be pretty safe but there are people that are walking around looking for people to kill so just be careful of that. With that being said, you can get lucky and have a good day where no one will mess with you and on those days you would definitely be making close to the wiki profit or perhaps even more. Now before I started this video, I had to go back and reclaim the fancy boots so that I could get the best defense bonus possible in free to play. Now I am curious, down in the comments let me know whether you are a fancy boots person or a fighting boots person. As for the gear setup, I am wearing the tankiest of tankiest armors in free to play which is the full rune set. I am also wearing the fancy boots that you saw me get earlier. I am wearing the green dehyde van braces for my hand slot and I have of course the staff of air to help us cast the telekinetic grab spell. For the necklace slot I have the amulet of defense and I'm also wearing a regular cape to provide more defense bonuses. This is truly maxed out defense in free to play and if you look at the defense stats it's actually pretty high above 200 so we will be very tanky. As for the inventory, I am taking the best food, which is the anchovy pizza. You can eat these pretty quickly and they provide the most healing per inventory slot, so they are the best choice. And I also have the law runes and one water rune in case I need to teleport out of 20 wilderness quickly. I'm also bringing a bronze axe to get to the area. And speaking of getting to the area, you can start from Edgeville and make your way east and use the canoeing system, which I'll admit, I actually don't use very often. I think I've used it maybe like two or three times in my entire RuneScape life. Um, but yeah, this is a popular method of getting to the Black Chin area if you don't have any other teleports. So this is what the Bronze Axe is used for. I'll be making the Waka and we will take this boat all the way down to 35 Wilderness. In free to play, this is the best way to get there. You don't have access to nice teleports like Anacarl on free to play. So using this is the best method. Now you do of course need 57 woodcutting to use this method. So if you don't have it, you're probably gonna have to run all the way up to deep wilderness, which is quite the trek. Even with this shortcut taking us all the way to 35 wilderness, it is still a pretty far run to get to the area where we will be telegrabbing nature runes. And since we are wearing full rune armor, our stamina will deplete very quickly. So. I recommend walking over there, that way if you do get attacked, you're not running low on stamina. Me, I just ran over there to get there as quickly as possible. And because honestly, I don't think I'm going to die in this setup. I'm max combat, max mage, max defense, all that good stuff. And I'm wearing the tankiest armor, so all the free to play weapons that are available probably won't do very much damage to me. Now we can go ahead and start the one hour of collecting nature runes. Basically the spot that I'm standing in is the best spot because you can telegrab both nature rune spawns and you are away from the demon that is wandering around. If you were further south, you would get hit by the demon and it would interrupt the world hopping process, which is going to be the main part of this video. You will be hopping worlds constantly. And thanks to the removal of the world hop limit, this is now more profitable because before, if you tried to hop too many times, you would get kicked out and you'd have to sign in and it was just a big hassle. So now you can make more money. Now I don't recommend doing this on members worlds even if you have access to them because that will open up a new amount of PKers that can attack you and you really don't want to get caught out here in free to play gear. Also Callisto is pretty close to where I am in the members world so if Callisto got too close to you she would definitely mess you up. 
So yeah, even though free to play worlds can be pretty crowded, I definitely recommend only doing this method if you are free to play. As for PKers that are here, like I said, I wasn't expecting a lot, especially at my level since I'm max level. Um, I didn't expect to get attacked for this one hour, but I was definitely proven wrong. I met some other people that were telegrapping the nature runes, and of course some of the worlds that I hopped over to were also empty already. So you might have to hop around to find a good section of worlds that aren't already taken up by someone. And here you can see I did get attacked for the first time pretty early on, and uh, they didn't manage to do any damage just because of how tanky this armor setup is. They had melee and they had range. Honestly, I think the only thing that's going to get through damage wise is probably going to be mage. But again, you only have access to lower tier combat spells here in free to play. And my magic level is 99. And of course, I can pray magic and I can also use the mystic might prayer, which will also help out in magic defense. Now, I wish I could say that this was the only time that I got attacked, but that's not true. I actually get hit by a team later on. Yes, you heard me right. A free-to-play team that is PKing at this spot. So, I mean, they must make some decent money if they have teams running around here. And they also have some scouts because that first time that I got attacked, um, I think they found me right after I logged into a world that had a lower level PKer. So I'm pretty sure he relayed my location to the team. And since I was just hopping down one world at a time, it wasn't hard to find me. But later on, once I started running into PKers, I decided to hop uh, to random worlds within my section of worlds that I was using. Just to mix it up and so that they wouldn't interrupt me. Because I was going to pause the timer whenever I was running back to the area. But I figured that I would just let it keep running since this is part of the one hour. I mean, you are going to get attacked here, most likely. So... I decided not to pause the timer whenever I was running back to the spawn even though it took a very long time to get back there. So like I said earlier, you could have a good day where there's no PKers around and if that's the case then you would definitely make more money than I did today. But I did do this kind of late so the fact that there was people still running around might mean that this is a popular PKing spot on free to play. I did do this I believe it was Tuesday night so yeah. Now, as a lower level, it might be a lot more dangerous since you won't be as tanky, but I think as long as you have access to rune armor, you should be safe because it does have very high defense bonuses. It's also helpful to have protect prayers, like protect from melee, range, and magic. And here's the team that hit me and it didn't take long for me to lose them. And speaking of the escape route, you want to make sure that you run east first because the area that we are in is multi, which means that if a team logs in, multiple people can hit you and the chances of you living are... A lot lower so make sure you run east or at least run southeast so you can run into singles and then you can run south to 20 wilderness and teleport out unless they tell you block you then you're gonna have to run all the way down to level one so hopefully the food and armor will be enough honestly this armor is super tanky and really the only combat style that i think is going to get through it is magic and even then we can either take off the armor to increase our magic defense or just use the protect from magic spell or prayer to reduce the incoming damage but yeah that is pretty much it for the one hour of tele grabbing these nature runes as you can see here we got 1404 for a total value of 306,000 gp so not bad at all we can now go ahead and sell them and it won't be very long to sell these since they are popular um nature runes will always have a use in runescape so it shouldn't be too hard to sell them we sold them for 217 coins each, and the total profit is 304,668 GP. So, again, not a bad moneymaker for free-to-play, but it is kind of dangerous, and there are multiple people that are wandering around this spot, so just be careful. But now we can go ahead and calculate the total profit from this one hour. So we subtract the cost of the law runes that we used. We get around 65,363 GP. From the total amount of money that we made which was 304,668 gp we get a grand total profit of 239,305 gp from one hour of collecting nature runes and like i said before you can definitely make more money here if you get lucky and there are no pkers out but this is with us getting attacked a couple times so still a decent money maker but just keep in mind that you are risking so i would at least bank once every hour so you don't risk too much and here is a look at the magic XP that we got from the one hour along with some minor woodcutting XP that we got from using the canoe early on. 
I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode.